and welcome to A Word for This Day podcast. I'm Jory Schaefer, the show's host and creator, and it is my joy and pleasure to welcome you today. Welcome to anyone who's found us for the first time. I'm so thankful that you are here, and welcome to you regular listeners. I'm so thankful that you come back day after day. It is such a joy to be on this journey with you, and I'm just thankful that we can think about God's Word together today. Please know that I continue to pray for you day after day. I continue to pray that the Lord would draw you closer to Him, give you more of a desire to know Him and His Word, and that you will be deliberate and intentional about carving out that time, spending that time with Him. Make an appointment. We make appointments for all the other things in our lives, and we, uh, if Most of us keep those appointments. Some of us are late to the appointments, but um, in in, uh, most cases, we tend to keep those appointments. And so may we have uh, that time with God as one of our standing most important appointments, friends. It's not something that we need to let fall by the wayside. And, you know, I've been guilty of doing that at times. I just do everything else and try to fit a little bit of time with God and Jesus in. It doesn't work that way. Our holy God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, deserves first place in everything. And we can show that. We can remind ourselves if we are disciplined and deliberate in spending that time. So I want to encourage you in that. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I still have lots of work to do on this. Uh, But let's purpose today to do better than we did yesterday. Let's seek his kingdom first and uh, and seek him and live as he uh, told the prophet Amos to tell the people, seek him and live. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to do that today. Please consider sharing this podcast with your friends, family, neighbors, strangers, just anyone who you think may receive a blessing from it. And know, as always, that I love to hear from you. So if you feel so lit, send me a message sometime and let me know what the Lord's doing in your life as you're spending more time with Him. Well, our verse for the day for May the 1st, Happy May. Can't believe it's already May. We're just ticking right along. And we are in episode, I think, what is it, 121 today uh, for the year and like 851 for the, uh, since we started, no, it's 122 and 852. This is our 852nd episode. We're going to have to have some kind of a celebration when we get to a thousand. (laughs) We'll give God all the glory, all the more for that. Uh, But here we are in May, and our verse for today is a, a very important one, and it comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 1, reads as follows from the Legacy Standard Bible. Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know they are doing evil. Oh, friends, there is a lot of stuff here, and this convicts me uh, very much about being um, thoughtful and reverent and deliberate about our worship and about going to worship in the house of the Lord. This is also important, I think, as we uh, draw near to him to pray or to study his word. And so we're going to talk more about that today. Uh, And I'm excited for us to park here. You know, we're in the Old Testament and we're in this book of Ecclesiastes. This is in that section that is known as the wisdom and poetry section. Remember that the Old Testament begins with the five books of the law, um, and then it moves, and we were just there the two, uh, the last two days before this. It moves into that wisdom and poetry section, which is Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, Song of Solomon, and Ecclesiastes, and then it moves into the major prophets and the minor prophets. So those are kind of the big categories of the Old Testament. 
Um, This book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon, and he was known as the preacher. That preacher means that he was the one who addressed the congregation. And we know that because Ecclesiastes opens up in this way. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. And uh, Solomon has a very interesting um, way with this book of Ecclesiastes. You know, I've said before, when you first read it, it kind of sounds like uh, Eeyore. If you know who I'm talking about with Eeyore um, in uh, the Winnie the Pooh stories, Eeyore was that one who was just kind of, he was that donkey who was just kind of, oh, well, life is hard and then you die, you know, that sort of thing. And you kind of see that theme throughout uh, this this book. Uh, Solomon was just taking a a good look at life and the pursuits that people have in life and what happens to people in this life and that life is hard. And good things and bad things happen both to those who do good and to those who do evil. And everybody dies. And sometimes you work really hard and then you still die. And you can work very hard and some people will have uh, riches from that and some people don't. And so at first, you know, a skeptical view would be, oh my, this is... uh, you know, what? what is life all about? And I think that was what he was trying to discern. He was trying to say, okay, what, you know, what's the purpose of this? Um, but he gets to the end, and, uh, and I think this is the overriding theme. This is what is so important. He comes to this great conclusion here at the end in um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, uh, verse uh, 12, and it says, um, well, actually, in verse 13, it says, The end of the matter, all that has been heard, fear God and keep his commandments, because this is the end of the manner for, matter for all mankind. For God will bring every work to judgment, everything which is hidden, whether it is good or evil. And so he came to that conclusion, and that was so important. But we see kind of his journey uh, to get there somewhat all the way through. Now, the interesting thing about Solomon, um, remember I I mentioned and it said it at the opening here, he was a king. He was the third king of that united kingdom of Israel before it was split into the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. His father was David before David was the first king of Israel, and that was King Saul. Uh, Saul became disobedient to the Lord, and then God uh, had Samuel to anoint David. David was considered a man after God's own heart, even though he he uh, had faults and failures just like every one of us. He was a sinner just like every one of us, but he, um, he truly uh, sought the Lord. He sought to have relationship with the Lord. He sought to be obedient to the Lord. He sought to return to the Lord when he realized that he had been away from him. Solomon seemed to start out that way, but later, unfortunately, in his life, he turned away and he did um, just what the Lord told him not to do. He was disobedient. And uh, we read about, though, uh, Solomon and the wisdom that God gave him. And I want to just hop over to that Back in the history section, like we just talked about over in First Kings, and it tells about when God asked Solomon, what shall I give you? And, and then Solomon answered. Um, it says um, in First Kings chapter 3, verse 3, and Solomon loved Yahweh. And remember, that is that covenant name for God the Father, walking in his statutes of his father David, except he sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered 1,000 burnt offerings on that offer, on that altar. In Gibeon, Yahweh appeared to Solomon in a dream at night, and God said, Ask what I shall give to you. 
Then Solomon said, You have shown great loving kindness to your slave David, my father, according to how he walked before you in truth and righteousness and uprightness of heart towards you. And you have kept for him this great loving kindness that you have given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. So now, O Yahweh, my God, you have made your slave king in place of my father David, yet I am but a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your slave is in the midst of your people, which you have chosen, a numerous people who are too many to be numbered or counted. So give your slave a listening heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this glorious people of yours? And it was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said to him, Because you have asked this thing and have not asked for yourself long life, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have you asked for the life of your enemies, but but have asked for yourself discernment to listen to justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart, so that there has been no one like you before you, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will not be among it, so that there will not be any among the kings like you all your days. Now, if you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and commandments as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. And so God did exactly what he had said. And you can read it toward the end of chapter four about how wise Solomon was. And there are examples of his wisdom and understanding and discernment. <clears throat> and then Unfortunately, over in chapter 11, we read the sad part of Solomon's story that he did exactly what the Lord told him not to. He was disobedient and he uh, took wives from uh, other countries, wives that followed after other gods that didn't follow the one true living God. And God had told him not to do that, that that his heart would be turned away. And sure enough, that's what happened. And so some would say, well, why should we study these words of Solomon? Well, it's because it's in the word. And God has told us that all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, correction, reproof, and training in righteousness, that the man of God may be uh, thoroughly equipped (laughs) for every good work. I just love that. And so um, it's very important. It's important for us to look at these examples. It's important to see uh, what God gave Solomon to write. And so Solomon wrote at least two of the Psalms that we know of. I believe it was Psalm 72 and 127. He wrote um, the book of Proverbs, this uh, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon, and uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. And so we are in that. Now, this book of Ecclesiastes does not read like a um, a history book or a narrative. It more um, is just similar to what we saw in Proverbs. There's just little sections of things that Solomon has thought through, things that he um, has come to realize, things that God has given him um, in his wisdom. And so uh, we're going to hop over here. I'm just going to jump right in to this section. He had just finished talking about the oppressed and and um, how things are hard for everybody. And then we get to this chapter five and it opens up in this way. And I'm going to read this uh, chapter five, verse one, all the way down to seven. And then we're going to go back up to this, uh, to our verse for the day and park there. But he says, guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools for they do not know they are doing evil. Do not be hasty with your mouth or impulsive in your heart to bring up a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven, but you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For the dream comes through abundant endeavor and the voice of a fool through abundant words. When you make a vow to God, do not be late in paying it. For he takes no delight in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Do not allow your mouth to cause your flesh to sin and do not say in the presence of the messenger of God that it was a mistake. 
Why should God be angry on account of your voice and wreak destruction on the work of your hands? For in many dreams and vanities are many words. Rather, fear God. So this is a theme that we've talked about over and over, over the last uh, few months and the last two or three years about um, having the appropriate holy reverence for a holy God and not being uh, flippant or careless uh, when we come to him in prayer, when we go into his house, when we read his word. And this is such a reminder for me uh, because sometimes I think we rush in and we've got so many things to do and and we want to check our box and not realizing that uh, we have been graciously granted the opportunity to come before the grace of God, or, or before the throne of God, I should say. We've been graciously given the opportunity to read words that he has given to us so that we can know him and know more of him. We are graciously allowed the opportunity to worship the one who made everything who uh, created our life and our breath and has given us our being. We are graciously allowed to worship uh, Jesus who gave his life for us and made a way for us to be able to come to the Father. And so it's not something that we should take lightly or take for granted or... um, just kind of um, make a a joke or a game out of it. Um, There is a time for uh, joy and happiness and all of those sorts of things, and we are filled with joy because of what he has done for us, because what he has given us in his Holy Spirit. Um, But uh, I think sometimes we lose that reverence, and so Solomon realized the importance of that, And he's reminding those who would listen. He's reminding this congregation to whom he was addressing. um, Guard your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. That sacrifice of fools that he talks about later is words, just um, excessive words with no meaning. And um, he talks about, you know, how those words pour out. We... And I think sometimes we fall into that. We live in a society where it's very wordy and a lot of words that mean nothing and a lot of words that are not true. And um, so may we guard our steps. May we listen. May we go into his house and into his presence um, with the right heart. If we see that we don't have that, may we ask him to cleanse our hearts and to uh, show us where we need to be quietened, quietened, where we need to be still. And may we honor him with, with um, with that reverence that he deserves. Now, there is no doubt that we have have been told in uh, Hebrews especially that we can with confidence draw near to that throne of grace because of what Jesus has done for us. But there is a time, and I think it should be more often than not, I'm I'm trying to um, get my mind to think about this, that we don't need to uh, uh, bypass the importance of thinking about the holiness of God. And that it truly is a privilege and that when we come to him, we are coming into the presence of a holy God. You know, it used to be that, um, of course, in the Old Testament, before before Jesus came and before we had that, uh, that way through him, before we had the Holy Spirit to guide and, and to direct and convict and all of that, um, that... It was only certain people could go into the presence of God, and that was the priests. And they had to get prepared to do that. And then it was only certain times, you know, when I think about on that Day of Atonement when the the uh, high priest had to get uh, cleaned up, washed up, get certain clothes on uh, before he could even go into that Holy of Holies and... Um, 
and make atonement for the people. And then it was just a short time. And then I think uh, I've read that they would uh, tie something around the priest so that if he fell dead, they could pull him back out because everybody wasn't allowed to go into that. I think about when uh, Moses was given those words uh, from God and um, the people couldn't even come to and touch the mountain or an animal couldn't touch the mountain, the base of the mountain where God was uh, because they would die. And so I I think we mustn't um, miss that, the holiness of this one who created the universe. And and I fear that I have been guilty of not thinking about the, uh, the holiness of him so that when I go into his house, uh, our place of worship, that I guard my steps, that I do more listening than talking. Now, there is no doubt that he has drawn us to him. There is no doubt that now, you know, that dividing wall has been taken away if we're in Christ Jesus, that we can call him daddy. That's what Abba means. And uh, because we are children of his, if we're believers, he allows us to come. But we still mustn't... um, uh, take for granted that I think uh, may may he help us to know uh, so that we have that holy reverence um, and so that we fear him you know uh, not in a, a scary fear we read that perfect love cast out fear he has sent his perfect love in Jesus he has loved us if we've accepted and been forgiven we have that uh, but may we give him the reverence that he deserves Deserves. May we listen more than we speak. May we be slow to speak, quick to listen, um, as the scripture says, and not be foolish with lots of words and lots of flashiness. May we come before him with a true heart um, that wants to know more of him. I think of what we read in Psalm 46, 10, and you know, many translations will say be still, but that be still means to stop striving, to pay attention, listen to this, cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Yahweh of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And I think about what we read in Psalm 100, and we'll close with that in a second, but it has to be with not thinking about us. If we are going to uh, speak and say things, may we honor him, may we glorify him, may we worship him. And the best way to guard our our hearts, guard our steps, guard our mouth and listen is to be in his word, friends, to realize just how much he loves us, what he's done for us, how great he is. And for those of us who are believers, we are guided by that Holy Spirit to know more of him and to Uh, understand more and more of his ways and uh, to want to worship him. But I want to close with this, that for us to think about as we enter into his courts. um, And now, you know, as believers, uh, the Holy Spirit abides in us. Uh, We are in him. He is in us. He dwells within us. So it's when we come before him, may we... um, Be intentional and think about his holiness and his goodness. If we are going to say words uh, in his presence as we begin, may it be of praise and worship and adoration um, and then confessing our sins and then asking or pleading. But listen to this. Make a loud shout to Yahweh, all the earth. Serve Yahweh with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that Yahweh, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for Yahweh is good. His loving kindness endures forever and his faithfulness generation unto generation. In those ways, all of the attention is is focused on him and not anything 
of us. May that be how we enter his presence in all times, that we are focusing on him first, that we're denying ourselves and focusing on him. Blessings to you, friends. Until next time.